Hello, and welcome to Coralizer. This tutorial describes the basic configuration and use of Coralizer. If this is your first time running Coralizer, then when you start up, the first thing you will see is a preferences dialog. To get up and running, we need to configure only our displays. We'll explore this dialog more later, but for now, click on the display tab. If you have a single display, such as a laptop or a desktop with only one monitor, Coralizer should automatically gather all the information it needs. The values in the screen width field and the screen height field should correspond to the current resolution of your display. If you'd like to use multiple displays, you'll need to edit the rows and columns fields to reflect the number of displays you have and how they're arranged physically. For example, if you have two displays that are side by side, you change the number of columns to two because in Coralizer's world, this is you have a row of two displays. When you click away from the columns field that we just put two in, you'll notice that the diagram above will update to indicate two side-by-side -side displays. When using multiple displays, you should also be aware that it's important that both monitors are the same resolution. They don't have to be the same physical size, but they should be displaying the same resolution when you're running Coralizer, or you'll have very strange results. Uh, I don't recommend trying it. So make sure that your monitors are at the same resolution if you're using more than one display. Anyway, once you're satisfied with how this is set up, uh, you can hit OK and Coralizer will finish its loading process. I only have one monitor, so I'm going to re return this to one column, and click away, and we're back to one display. And now I'll hit OK, and Coralizer will finish loading. And once loading is complete, you'll see, here we go, three main areas of the program that you'll interact with on a regular basis. The first is this black area back here with measurements on it and a crosshair following my cursor uh, is called the visualization canvas or just the canvas. This is where all your core images and data will be displayed. It's sort of the heart of, of Coralizer visually at least. That's the first element. The second element is the session window which first contains menus exposing most of the functionality of Coralizer and also displays data about the images and data you have loaded in these panels here. And finally, we have the toolbar, which is pretty straightforward. It contains buttons that are convenient. So to demonstrate these a bit more and some of their basic functions, I will load a simple session just so there's something to look at. OK, so you can see here we have a single core section with one set of values graphed on it, and that's it. Let's start by looking at the basic toolbar controls. These are very straightforward. On the left are five mode buttons. 99% of the time you'll want to be in normal mode, which will allow you to pan and zoom the canvas, uh, which I'll demonstrate in a minute in more detail. Uh, generally you'll want to be in this mode almost all the time. We're going to ignore the other four modes for now. Uh, the second interesting portion of the toolbar is you can change the type of cursor uh, by default, it's this crosshair that also shows the current depth. Uh, but if you don't like that, you could also change to a normal mouse cursor that won't display anything. Uh, I prefer the crosshair myself. So that's a choice you have. Uh, this button here will show and hide the session window. Sometimes it gets in the way, it's a little big. Uh, click this and it will hide. And you can go about your merry way. Click it again and it will return. Next up is the minimize button. This is also very handy as Coralizer tends to be rather greedy with monitor space. It's nice to free things up by getting it out of the way. If you click this, uh, it will minimize entirely and be only in your taskbar. So to restore, you click and it should come back. And then finally, uh, this will quit Coralizer. It's one way to do so. You'll see down here, I don't want to quit yet, so I'm going to cancel. You can also quit from file quit. Again, I don't want to quit though. So that's the toolbar, the basics there. And finally, the session window. The session window lists the currently loaded session here, Coralizer Demo 1.1, uh, the current track. A track is a collection of sections that represents a single whole. Uh, 
the, the sections, in this case there is only one section, and also data files associated with these sections and the various uh, fields available in that data set. As you can see right now, there are many, many fields available. We only have one plotted right now. We'll get into graphing in a later tutorial. And finally, to, to work with the canvas is very simple. Uh, to pan the canvas, you simply drag, so hold down the mouse button and move around, and the canvas will move with you. And to zoom in and out, you use the scroll wheel, if one is available, so scrolling down scrolls out, and scrolling up scrolls forward, or in, rather. Uh, if you have a laptop with a trackpad that supports a scrolling gesture, that likely will also uh, result in zooming, so give it a try. And now before we stop, I'd like to return to the Preferences menu, or dialog, where we were at the beginning of this tutorial. To get there, in the Edit menu of the Session window, click Edit and choose Preferences. This time we're going to look at settings in the User Interface tab, fourth from the left, so choose that. Uh, the User Interface tab allows you a few choices about how things look. For instance, if you are not fond of this yellow and red origin crosshair, you can uncheck it. This show, heart, show crosshair at origin checkbox and it will go away. Uh, I will leave it there for now. Uh, also, uh, you can change between horizontal depth and vertical depth. So if I do this, you'll see suddenly everything will flip around. Uh, but again, horizontal generally works better and I would recommend using it most of the time. Uh, and finally, if you prefer uh, some sort of grid, then you can check show grid and you have a variety of types to choose from and uh, frequencies to choose from. This won't update until you hit OK, but once you do, we'll suddenly have a grid to go along with our canvas. So that's all for now. For help beyond this and other tutorials, you can consult the manual, which is available under Help and Help. And it's best to minimize Coralizer to use the manual. Uh, you can either browse the table of contents, seen here, uh, or if you're looking for something in particular, you can use the magnifying glass tab to search. For instance, you'd search on resolution, and it should pull up all entries that contain the word resolution. So that's it for now. That concludes this tutorial, and thanks for watching.